Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have one of the most impressive dinosaur figures, maybe the most impressive dinosaur figure that I have ever seen in my entire life to take a look at with you guys. This is the brand new Triceratops, the adult 118th scale version for the Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series, and... I honestly don't think, even though David Silva had shared many images over the past few months trying to give us an idea of just how large this Triceratops is, I don't think that I was fully prepared for how big it truly would be until I actually pulled it out of the box. And I am honestly blown away by how incredible this is in both, of course, the overall beauty, but the size. It is massive. And it honestly looks incredible through this window area here. I cannot wait to get this out of the packaging. But as far as the actual box art goes, you can see that we have the Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series logo over here. And then we also have a gorgeous image of the Triceratops right there, as well as the species name. And then if we turn the box around, and it is a very big box, you can see that we have a checklist of the other Ceratopsians, which are in the final wave. Of the Ceratopsian series we are now at the final run of these figures completing the entire series and you can also see a sneak peek of the card that is inside of the Triceratops as well as some information down there and it also says that the art is by RJ Palmer so that's pretty cool to know who is responsible for the incredibly beautiful artwork right there and the rest of the box is pretty much your standard as far as what you get when it comes to a Beasts of the Mesozoic figure. So I honestly am ridiculously excited for this. So let's pop this out of its box right now. We also have a look at what you can see here is the artwork in the back of the box. One of the coolest things I think about the Ceratopsian series that, well, Beasts of the Mesozoic in general, but that consistently gets overlooked is how cool the backdrops are that are included in the back of the packaging. Honestly, a tremendous way to display your Ceratopsians is with including this kind of backdrop artwork that is included with your models when they're up on the shelf. Oh man, words cannot exactly express how unbelievable this Triceratops is. But before we bring that in and show you how incredible it is, first I want to show you guys that as far as what you actually get inside the box, of course, on top of your Ceratopsian, you get a slip here that also tells you how to, if I could turn it to the right side, assemble the figure as far as like the tail and stuff. It basically tells you how to heat it up and then you can warm the tail with, you know, hot water or a hair dryer or something to try to make the material a little more flexible, which makes it a lot easier to put your model together and apply the tail without actually breaking something. And that actually works also when it comes to like the joints and stuff, because sometimes you'll get the joints when they're, you know, not moved around or anything. Sometimes they can be really stiff at first until you do move them around. So that's another good way to kind of loosen the joints on the figure. If you happen to get one that has, you know, stiff joints or anything, just, you know, hit it with the hair dryer or hot water or something for a little bit. It'll loosen it up and should open up and start articulating quite nicely. And then we also have the card, and look at that beautiful, beautiful card. That's some really nice artwork right there, and uh, I love the overall quality of the card. Really nice glossy finish for it as well. Really nice high quality feel. And then here on the back, we have an image of the Triceratops as well as information on the Triceratops. Creative Beast again, as well as the art being from R.J. Palmer, and then David Silva and Creative Beast Studio down at the bottom. So I love the fact that these are included. Really cool on the part of David Silva to include cards like this and kind of have like a collectible card series on top of your awesome Ceratopsians. And we also get this time some alternate horns for our Triceratops. And uh, I don't know exactly quite yet what the difference is between these horns and the others as I haven't taken, you know, a close enough look. I just got everything out kind of through the tail on the Triceratops, which I did actually have to apply some hot water to do just because it's a pretty big figure and the tail really did not want to go on but you can see that we again have those alternate horns which we will take a look at here in just a moment and then we have this massive beast of a triceratops and i am just in complete awe at how beautiful this is the Sculpt, of course, is fantastic. I 100% expected the sculpt to be incredible. The two things I'm most impressed with currently is, of course, how huge it is because it is massive beyond belief. 
and also how nicely done the paintwork is like this is really really nice again you get kind of like some flashiness with your ceratopsian but there's a lot of natural looking paint application throughout the course of this figure that i can see specifically up in the head i am in love with the paintwork and coloration of the head of this triceratops but as a whole i think the entire thing looks honestly phenomenal as far as the paint application goes specifically like there in the face you know it's so nice but the entire body really does look great again flashiness included on your ceratopsian but all of the tones of color look so natural throughout the course of the figure and it really impresses me that this is a factory paint job you know the beast of the mesozoic line has some of the nicest dinosaur models that you'll see anywhere ever and on top of that some of the nicest paint apps that you'll see anywhere ever as well so without further ado let's go ahead jump straight to a closer look right now so starting up here at the head sculpt of our triceratops it is so massive it's actually hard to get it you know close and in screen it's such a big figure but you can see that as far as the detailing aspect goes it is unbelievably vibrant that detail pops so nicely on the sculpt and you can see so much paint work it's really crazy just how many different tones of color are honestly included in the face of this triceratops you can see many different variations of lighter and darker shades of browns as well as almost yellowish browns we have blacks we have whites we have blues we have many different variations of browns up here leading up into the frill we also have reddish browns like there's so much coloration included on this triceratops and even here in the beak which again the detailing aspect of the beak is super lifelike super realistic it has some really nice texturing to the beak itself and they've applied some nice dry brushing but it's a real light dry brushing so that the detail pops and looks really nice and realistic but you can also see like a reddish coloration for the beak we have a nice light brown here for the lower part of the beak but you also have some reddish tones included in there as well again so much coloration it's really really impressive you can also see the nostrils right there you can see some nice dry brushing here as we lead up to that horn right there you can even see some hints of the blue in the horn itself the horn detail also looks fantastic you have some more of this kind of like it's actually more of like an off-white more so than a white but you can see that kind of stripes down here and then also leads up on top of that horn to add an extra little bit of coloration to the horn itself the jaw is articulated but mine is really stiff i can't get it open right now and I didn't realize how stiff it was because when I took it up to apply the tail you know I used some hot water on the tail I had I realized that the jaw was so stiff I probably would have added some hot water to the you know jaw here to open it up but we can see a little bit of what's going on inside the mouth right there really nice realistic tones of color included in there I could see like a nice pinkish coloration as well as a nice wash that's been added in there beautiful gloss coat we can also see the teeth if we look into the back of the mouth right there, you can see the teeth are sculpted out and painted inside the mouth. And the tongue looks really nice from what we can see in there. Very, very nice detailing inside the mouth, even though it currently doesn't want to open. And I really don't want to force it. I do not want to break this figure. Really nice scale detail here on the face as well. You can see quite a bit of different varying sizes of scales. Really nice fine scaling up here. Beautiful fine scaling down here as well. But you can see it starts to enlarge a little bit as you get closer to the bottom of the lower jaw. You can see more of that fine scaling right there along this area until we get up here into the upper part of the head of the ceratopsian. And you can see some really nice texturing up here. Like it's really incredible how much detail is found on this triceratops the eye is also painted beautifully really nice detail around the eye lots of kind of creases and everything the eye itself is a yellowish coloration but there are also some hints of reds and stuff inside the eye to give it that very realistic and lifelike appearance that we have for it and you can also see a nice black pupil and a really nice gloss coat helping it shine and glisten like a real eye would as you move up here into the horn of the triceratops you can see varying colors in that area as well as we have browns very dark browns some light browns and reddish browns in that area of the triceratops really impressive that they found a way to apply so much paintwork and so much coloration to a dinosaur like this and at the same time it's like they didn't overdo it like it's not too much and they found a way to make it all look like it belongs look really nice and natural really cool on the part of this line and David Silva and you can also kind of see like a little seam right here and that's because we can pull the horn off to put the other horns on so we will do that in a little bit here but again the detailing aspect of the horns of the triceratops 
is also really nicely done. You can see some very nice, very fine detail to the horns themselves throughout. So that's incredible. Also, as we lead up into the frill, again, look at how nice the actual texturing looks and so much color variation. They've really made the head sculpt of the Triceratops look very flashy, but in probably the most naturalistic way. We can see some nice yellowish tones up here, as well as some blues kind of like that reddish coloration that runs down the center of the frill. And you can see that's that same style of coloration there for the opposing side of the frill also. So the head sculpt is just absolutely gorgeous, of course, sculpt-wise, but also paint-wise. Again, I really love the coloration that David has chosen for this Triceratops. As you lead back into the neck region, you can see lots of kind of like skin wrinkles, skin folds, you know, everything going on there. Even some tensing in the neck right here. You can also see beautiful scale detail, again, really vibrant. And they've used a very nice combination of different colorations of dry brushing to enhance the scale detail quite beautifully throughout the course of the figure, which I think was a great idea on their part. You can see a very reptilian style scaling for the underside of the neck region of the Triceratops. You can also pick out the throat, but also, again, more color variation. There's just a ton of color included on this Triceratops. It's really blowing my mind, honestly, how much paintwork there is included in this. We start to see a really nice area here of some blue, some flashiness, and even within that blue, there seems to be lighter and darker shades of that blue, as well as even some slight hints of a white in that area. And then as you lead up here, you can see the back of the frill also looks fantastic coloration-wise. Again, some very nice detailing included as well. Nothing crazy going on back here, but I love the tones of color used. I like how it darkens down here, but then lightens as you get closer to the end of the frill here on the back. And there's also like a brown wash that looks to have potentially been applied, or maybe this is just dry brushed over, so I can kind of see some of the darker coloration underneath. You can also see how nice those scales look up here on the top of the Triceratops. You start to see some kind of like osteoderms picking up, running along the spinal column of the Triceratops, and more beautiful scale detail. You can see how it starts out pretty fine, but of course, as we get further back into the body of the Triceratops, that scale detail picks up and picks up in a big way. Those scales increase in size quite drastically, and you can also see some osteoderms kind of littering the body all over the place just sporadically throughout the course of the figure. Then you have kind of almost like a peach type color here that's also circled with a blue, adding in even more extra color variation. And you can also see kind of a reddish brown that runs along the spinal column and then some darker browns, almost bordering on a black, but I would say it's more like a really dark brown. And then some alternate variation of browns with kind of like some more reddish browns. And then again, it just kind of transitions back and forth. So many different tones of color included. And you can see those very dark brown Tones striped down here into the side of the Triceratops. We also have more of that blue showing up right there. But then once you get down here, you can kind of see almost like an outline of like the reddish coloration ever so slightly and subtly added right there that follows along those stripes. But then you can see a transition to a beautiful yellow and then transition to an off-white here for the underside. And look at how insanely nice that scale detail is. That is just drop dead gorgeous scale detail and you can see again that they've applied a nice dark wash here for the underside so all of that scale detail pops beautifully. And you have more skin wrinkles and skin folds here in the stomach region leading back here into the thigh. You can see that that leg looks beautiful here. The front leg, here's an alternate variation of brown that I'm actually not even sure we've seen up until this point. But you can see that again, the sculpting of the leg looks fantastic. Really nice muscle definition included in that area. You can really pick out just how muscular the dinosaur is. And again, more incredible coloration as you have almost some of that brown that leads down here along this darker brown. And even in this darker brown, you can see alternate shades of lighter and darker shades of brown. It's just crazy how much paintwork is included in this figure. And then here on the back, you could see just right here, like a yellowish tone, but then it changes to an alternate yellowish tone right there. And again, it's all brought out beautifully with a combination of dry brushing and washes. And then moving down into the foot sculpt, you can see the toes are really nicely displayed in the foot sculpt. You can even see like the bone structure of the toes leading up into the leg a little bit or further up into the foot at least right there. You also have those really nicely painted and uh, nicely glossed nails. Like they look honestly picture perfect as far as the way nails would shine on an animal, on a living being. 
And you can see as we move back up here, again, we have even some variations of like some lighter whites right here amongst those skin folds. Leading back up here into the upper part of the Triceratops, we see more of those blue spots and stuff picking up. You'll also see some more osteoderms as you move down here into the thigh. Look at that scale detail. Man, that's so vibrant, so nice. Really nice skin wrinkles and stretching and stuff right here in the rear of the thigh as well and just tons more color variation as per usual you have another area of like a random brown here and then we have some darker kind of blacks or like a very dark brown there's also some other variations of brown included you have a nice dark yellow right here with even some light hints of a reddish brown another variation of brown right here and then kind of like an off white or a light yellow that transitions to a little bit of a darker yellow with some more of that kind of reddish brown bordering around the outer rim of that black stripe it is honestly insane how much color variation is included here. You can see the kneecap slightly there in the front of the leg. You can also see that beautiful, very large bulging calf muscle as you move down the course of the leg down into the foot. You can see the ankle is very nicely displayed in the sculpt as well as, again, at the foot. The toes look really nice here on the rear foot. And I love how they're kind of like yellow here on the bottom, but then this brown comes out, but doesn't go the entire way out onto the toes. It looks really cool, adds even a little hint of flashiness to the toes, but you can see how incredibly vibrant the detail is, even on the feet. It's just crazy how vibrant the detail throughout the course of this figure truly is. And again, really nicely glossed and painted nails. There is no sloppiness at all on any of these Ceratopsians that I have encountered yet, which further shows just how high quality these models are and how David Silva really wants to give you the best possible product, taking such care and putting so much passion into this project to make sure that everything looks as top-notch as it possibly can. And we lead back up here again into the tail and we start to see pretty much a plethora of coloration again with some blues. We have some like off whites some yellows, some variations of browns. We have this black, we have the reddish brown up here. And then once we come out the rest of the tail, you start to see kind of like a, a striping where this kind of stripes down, the black stripes down, but the blue stripes up back and forth. And then some more of that kind of like off white yellowish type of a color. As we lead out the length of the tail, we have more of those osteoderms running along the top of the spinal column of the Triceratops as well. If we take a look here at the underside, the underside just looks incredible. Look at how beautiful that scale detail pops on the underside because they've really nicely dry brushed out certain sections as well as given a very nice dark wash, but it's a really subtle wash that they've applied. But man, that detail really pops down here. You can also see like some really nice muscle definition here on the underside as well as just in general a lot of girth to this triceratops looking like a very nice and healthy well-fed animal and again the really nice lighter coloration here for the underside sports even different tones of color included as there are very subtle differences between like slight yellows like lighter and darker yellows and even off whites here on the underside really nice like skin wrinkles and stuff showing up throughout the course of the figure as well and then when we look at the opposing side again it's probably going to look exactly like what we had just seen on the initial side due to the fact that the triceratops is an articulated figure so you're not really going to see too much difference over here compared to what we saw on the initial side but with that being said, that means that this site is going to look insanely beautiful as well. And you can see how nice that face looks over here on this side of the Triceratops. Again, look at how beautifully painted that eye is. That is honestly some phenomenal work right there. And I love that there's like some slight hints of reds and stuff within the eye socket area. Just giving you even more color variation as if you didn't have enough already making this look so lifelike and realistic. You have even more. Again, tons of color variation down here in the lower jaw as far as the very subtle and slight differences in tones of color included. It looks so super nice. And then as you lead back into the neck, you see more of those skin wrinkles and skin folds and stuff, just like we saw on the initial side, some tensing and everything in the neck as well. And then you start to see more of that darker coloration and you can see how it transitions back and forth between like a really dark brown blacks and some reddish browns and everything. More of those kind of like peach spots up here and then blue spots and stripes and stuff down here. The black striping down into that Really nice yellow side here for the dinosaur. Again, more of that like reddish coloration that borders around the outer area of the black. And then you can see how nicely defined the front leg is over here, just like we saw on the initial side. Really nice foot sculpt. Yet again, beautifully painted toes and very nicely glossed, just like we saw over there. 
and more skin wrinkles and skin folds and stuff throughout the course of the stomach, just like we saw on the previous side. Again, that detail is just mind-bogglingly beautiful with the way it pops on the sculpt. So much incredible scale detail throughout the entire course of the figure. Again, beautiful muscle definition moving down the thigh end, down into the calf. That calf muscle is very, very nicely defined. Very large animal, so it would need large muscles to carry it around. We have that beautiful foot sculpt back here as well, and then we lead back up again into the tail. And this, like I had stated, is easily one of, if not the most impressive dinosaur figures I have ever seen in my entire life. It honestly has such a presence to it, and the only way I can truly tell you to experience how incredible this figure truly is, is to pick one up. You definitely need to do that. While the backer kit is still live, you can still pre-order this. Make sure you do that before the backer kit goes away, and then I think the price like goes up slightly before it hits the Creative Beast Studio website. So make sure you take advantage of that slightly lower price currently and get a hold of this right now. And we also have the alternate horns here which you can see we have two different horns. These ones kind of have more of like a bend in them, it seems, than the other ones. The other ones seem to be a little bit more straight. So if we actually put one down, we bring one of the horns up here. This is the horn that was on the Triceratops. This is the alternate horn. So you can see that there is some difference between the two. There's much more of a curve to this horn right here. And it's also a little bit smaller than the horns that are currently on the Triceratops. The coloration and detail looks pretty much the same, so that means it's beautiful, just like the initial horn is. But there is a slightly different appearance to these other horns compared to the initial ones. Again, we could take these horns off completely and replace them with the initial horns that we were just taking a look at here. And you can see how nice the Triceratops looks with those horns on as well. So you have... A little bit of a different look for the Triceratops once you apply those horns. I'm honestly not positive which one I prefer, but both really do look great. As far as articulation goes on our Triceratops, it's pretty much all your standard articulation as far as one of these Ceratopsians go. Again, the jaw does absolutely articulate, but mine is really stiff right now, so I have to loosen that up at some point soon. But we also have neck articulation. So you can see that Triceratops can actually turn its head pretty far. That's really got quite the far turn in it. Same deal for the opposite direction. We can also go up and go down. So there's some very nice mobility right here in the neck region, but you'll also have articulation back here as you reach the body. There's definitely some more articulation back there. I don't want to move it too much, but you can see how it's turning and stuff right there. You also have articulation here in the leg, the front leg. You have it in the elbow as well. Now, again, a lot of this is probably stiff. I haven't moved any of this stuff around really, so it may not articulate too well right now until you really loosen it up and get it moving. But there we go. We've got the elbow articulation. Try to move it back very safely. And we also have wrist articulation, which can go, you know, forward up. You know, it also can swivel a little bit here. Not entirely, I don't think. Maybe it can. We also have midsection articulation, which can really create some crazy scenes for your Triceratops. You can see it completely can swivel around, and now we have a mutant if we really want to go that route. But it can also, of course, turn, you know, left or right to articulate your Triceratops quite a bit. You have hip articulation, very smooth. It can also move out away from the body and then back in. Knee articulation which was shockingly actually quite smooth because usually the joints are a little stiff when I first start to operate them, but that one wasn't. So some knee articulation. And you also have two areas down here in the ankle, so you can create some really cool difference for your Triceratops as far as the movement and positioning for the foot. You can really get that nice running pose as you can lead the foot out like this and just, you know, create a lot of different positioning for your dinosaur, a lot of display options. And then, of course, the tail, which can swivel entirely if you would like. And it can also move, you know, left, right, all of that. So there is just a ton of possibilities as far as posing your Triceratops and display options and all of that. There is a lot that can be done when it comes to a Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series figure which is just one of the many reasons these figures are just some of the top-of-the-line dinosaur models you'll find anywhere. As far as a size goes, I'm actually going to turn the Triceratops around, I think, to get a size here looking at the tail. So for a length from the snout to the tail, 
you are looking at about 17 inches or about 43, almost 43 and a half centimeters. That is crazy for a Triceratops. That is huge. And then for a height, the highest point would obviously be the frill right here. You are looking at about seven and three quarter inches or around 19 and a half centimeters, somewhere in that vicinity, roughly. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line in comparison to our 118th scale Triceratops. And you can see in comparison to these figures exactly what I was talking about when I tell you it is huge. It is no lie. That is a massive massive triceratops and you can see if we get nice and you know next to them you can really see just how massive this triceratops is without question the biggest beast of the mesozoic figure that i have so far that will change once the tyrannosaurs you know release but currently this beast of a triceratops is completely overruling my beasts of the mesozoic collection and then for a second size comparison here is the previous smaller triceratops in comparison to the newer gigantic triceratops and you can definitely get a good idea of the size difference between the two and on top of those two we actually have the adult centrosaurus back here which previously was one of the largest ceratopsians in the series but quite clearly now has been completely overshadowed and outdone by this insanely beautiful 118th scale triceratops right here but I will say that the two Triceratops, this kind of juvenile version and the adult version look awesome together. Really cool as far as a display piece goes to have both together. But this new Triceratops, the large adult 118th scale version, might be the most impressive Ceratopsian so far out of any of the long line of Ceratopsians in this series. So this Creative Beast Studio, Beasts of the Mesozoic, 118th scale adult Triceratops is unbelievable. And that is not even a slight exaggeration. I honestly cannot stress enough to you guys, if you have not taken a chance yet on any of these Ceratopsians or even on the Raptors from the previous series, I really don't know what more I can do to convince you. You need to just go on over to Creative Beast Studios website and place an order for some of these Ceratopsians, some of the raptors, just anything from the beasts of the Mesozoic line, and your mind will be blown when you receive one in hand because they are just next level beauty. And I honestly think this Ceratopsian series was the perfect example to show off just how beautiful these models truly are because there's so much variety between the different species of Ceratopsians. Like the raptors were awesome. I love the raptors, but so many of them look so similar, so they kind of get lost in the shuffle and, uh, I feel like there's a lot more of a visual variety when it comes to the Ceratopsians over the Raptors. The Raptor series was fantastic, but I feel like the Ceratopsians really solidified the overall beauty of the Beasts of the Mesozoic line. And this Triceratops is honestly the icing on the cake as far as all of them go. Like, I feel like this Triceratops is at the top of the mountain and every Ceratopsian is underneath it because of just how unbelievable it is here in hand. Now, of course, there are a few other Ceratopsians coming in Wave 3 that I have yet to review, which is every other one that's left, but this one right here, this Triceratops, was one that I personally could not wait to get my hands on, and honestly, the wait was so worth it because the entire figure, it just has so much of a presence to it. It's just so huge and so impressive in honestly every aspect of the model if you look at it the detailing is just unbelievable like there's so much beautiful sculpt and detail and it's all so vibrant on the model every ounce of detail is perfectly and beautifully shown in the sculpt whether it's like the bone structure with the toes or the skin wrinkles and stuff in the stomach region or like the tensing in the neck like it's all there it's all fantastic as far as the way it's been sculpted out and all of the scale detail it's just so crazy to see how many different varying sizes of scales there are on the ceratops and on this triceratops and just shows you the lengths that uh, they go to to really give you the most realistic and highly detailed Ceratopsian with each and every one of their releases, but this Triceratops, again, in my opinion, tops them all. 
The paint scheme and paint application as well are both fantastic. Really cool paint scheme for the figure because it gives a lot of really nice flashiness, but at the same time maintaining a lot of darker tones on the figure, which I think makes it look a lot more realistic. And on top of all of that, again, adding in those flashy elements helps to kind of give you the best of both worlds as far as this particular version goes and that's actually something that can be said for almost the entire line I would say of the Ceratopsian series they've all had fairly flashy paint schemes but always really nice and natural and I like that this one also has some strong similarities between the adult and then the sub-adult version from before as far as the Triceratops go uh, like they have very strong similarities in the color scheme but you can kind of see how they progress as they get older that's a really cool idea on the part of David Silva but the paint application itself, again, is really nice and natural, beautifully applied. Everything throughout the course of the figure looks honestly like body color, not just paint on a figure. And the head sculpt specifically is just one of the most beautiful and breathtaking head sculpts as far as both the sculpt and the coloration and application of the paint that I've seen on any of these Ceratopsians throughout the course of this line. And then on top of all of that, you have some alternating horns which is really cool because it gives you the option to have your triceratops look slightly different as far as the actual horns go and then you have just tons of articulation on top of everything else so that as well creates pretty much a world of possibility as far as displaying your triceratops and really creates some really cool diorama options once those tyrannosaur series figures start to release so as a whole this triceratops is again probably the most impressive dinosaur figure i think i've ever seen in my life and easily the most impressive articulated dinosaur figure that I've had the pleasure of reviewing here on the channel. I want to give a huge shout out to David Silva for hooking me up with this Triceratops a little bit early as the actual waves have not started to ship yet. This was one of the samples he was sent to kind of get an idea of just how nice the figure's final product was. And he was awesome enough to send me this sample a little bit early as opposed to waiting for my order to actually be processed and everything. I got this one to review a little bit ahead of time. So huge thank you again to David for that awesome gesture. So if you are interested in picking this up, I We'll include a link in the description to where you can do that currently on the backer kit for the beasts of the mesozoic ceratopsian series so make sure you head on over there place an order for this right away so you can get yours as soon as possible and make sure you like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching